Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today is the final review of the Zod Dart XL. Now I know many of you have probably been waiting this for quite a while after we did the iNav conversion and I did take it out. However, it didn't go so well because I had launch control completely wrong and I completely wrecked it. But I was able to put it back together with some hot glue and some tape and I was good for another round. Now, some of the things that I've noticed from this, from the beginning, is I don't think this is aimed towards beginners, okay? Now, I don't consider myself a beginner beginner, but I'm still somewhat of a beginner-ish noobish in a way. So that said, just be careful when purchasing this. More than likely, you'll probably crash and then just break it, basically. And you're gonna have to start super gluing and um, or hot gluing and adding tape in different places like I have here. But putting it back together was pretty simple and straightforward, even though I cracked the front. Now, something you need to know is that Zod should really rethink a V2 of this, make it more rigid in the front here. So kind of like just a two millimeter carbon fiber, just rods going back there into a wall. So when it crashes, it just doesn't just go into pieces. It'll have, it'll keep its form, probably just break from here and here. So that's something that you can possibly do by yourself. I was thinking of designing uh, just a, a, a uh, just a quick design in, in uh, Fusion 360 and cutting it out on my CNC machine from two millimeter uh, carbon fiber and just put them next to the wall here and then just another long line here. It might not do much, but it should theoretically help somewhat uh, against, you know, hard crashes on the nose. Now today I did get one flight in and I'm glad I took it till I drained the battery. And the reason for that is when I landed, unfortunately, I disarm usually when I land and the propeller was set like this, caught onto the grass and then broke the propeller. I only have one propeller on me and uh, this uh, wooden piece back here that's holding the motor came off. But it came off pretty simple. When I took a look at it, there didn't really add much glue on this back part here, which is something that you possibly want to do. I'd probably recommend you, if you don't have hot glue with you, is just pull it off, it'll come right off. And then just add hot glue. I just added hot glue. And another thing you want to do before you do that is make sure you sand the inner foam so it'll stick very well to the wood here. And I just did that now and it's really good. I didn't have my uh, hot glue gun with me on the field. Um, but yeah, even, even if I did, I don't have another propeller. So the propellers here are 9 inch 4.5 pitch, I believe. Yeah, 4.5 pitch. I have one more prop like this and I also have 10 inch props from Gemfan that are 4.5 which I wanted to also test today. However, um, what I'm going to do next of this is to test its efficiency. Now, I believe I got 13 minutes of flight time on a 3,300 milliamp 4S LiPo here, which is really nice. CG was really easy to get. And something I truly recommend, now in one of my first crashes, 3D printed part wasn't here. Uh, I designed this and then I printed it. I don't know if I have it on my Thingiverse, but yeah, because I broke this completely, uh, so I had to design something. So the inner part is completely broken from this wooden part. So I redesigned just a little piece to kind of hold everything in place. However, I also recommend these these Umaguad or whatever. You can get them from the Rotorite store. And they actually sent these to me a while ago uh, just to try them out. And I just got to try them out right now. And they're actually an amazing piece of sticky tape anti-grip. It's like really sticky. And it was just it just held the battery perfect. Um, because sometimes you'd have to put it in a weird position in order to get the CG just right. So that being said, the, the overall structural integrity is pretty weak. And if you missed this whole build, I'll have a link to the build video down below how I went about doing everything here, uh, from, you know, just, just everything. So I'll have that down below. Um, overall it flew really nice when I got the launch control system to work great. Good. Um, I'll also be releasing the dump of my iNav settings. So if you want to copy my setup, you can go ahead and do that. What I used was auto-tune. It was somewhat windy. In the beginning, you see it wasn't really flying that well until I used auto-tune a little bit. And then you could kind of see it progress. Now, when you use auto-tune, just make sure when you land to save before you disconnect the battery. So I did that here, but unfortunately, when I got to my quad again, all I had was one propeller and this thing just broke off. But other, other than that, it's actually pretty... Uh, it's very easy to fix to be honest. For example here. I broke this too one, one of my crashes I just you know just hot glue and That's it. I just don't have any more any issues So it is bound to break somewhat here and there and all of these foam are but just the overall hollow uh, Body or canopy or whatever you want to call this fuselage is not very durable So keep that in mind if you can add some sort of structural integrity to the overall uh, plane is really good for you 
especially on your first maidens, uh, because those are the scariest, and those are the ones that usually break all my airplanes. The first couple maidens, I probably f forget to do something in the launch control system or something of that nature. Overall, I really love this due to a couple reasons. One thing, it was I think I can consider this pretty efficient that on 3,300 milliamps, I was able to get 10, 15 minutes of flight time. However, I have uh, lithium ion packs that I'll be setting up on this very soon on the next flight, maybe tomorrow, I don't know just yet, but I really want to take this out again. And also have a 5,000 milliamp LiPo that I want to try because I saw some guy do it on YouTube a while ago. So I just bought one 5,000 milliamp 4S LiPo that I want to stick in this bitch and want to see how long it's going to get for uh, how, how long flight time is going to give me. However, something that I forgot to do in the OSD was enable the amp reading. And unfortunately, this kind of feels like a half-assed review because it was just the first flight and that shit really pissed me off how it... I never expected it to break on the first flight. I mean... They are pretty brittle, uh, the, the propellers here, but you can put any propeller, unlike the previous Zod Orbit and the Zod Nano Talon, which have a proprietary propeller. This one, you can just stick whatever you want on here. So next flights is going to be a 7, I mean, the 9-inch prop, the default 9-inch prop, and as well as a Gemfan 10-inch prop with the same pitch. And I want to see if I can uh, check the current because I really wanted to test that, but I forgot to enable it on the OSD, so I don't know how well everything was doing. But saying all this, 10 minutes, 12 minutes of flight time on a 3,000 milliamp battery was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it felt really good in the air, felt really stable. Um, it didn't feel like, it wasn't dipping a wing, kind of like the Orbit. And I finally understand what the hell that means. On the Zod Orbit, it's really good with a pack of lithium ions. I can go for, I think I went around for 20 minutes the other day, I don't remember. But I'll have that upcoming very soon. Now, what the, the problem with the Zod Orbit compared to this one is the fact when you go, I think, I remember below 50 kilometers per hour or 60, then it starts acting weird. It just like starts dipping. This one was doing pretty good around 50, possibly 45, but then when, uh, when you get a gust of wind, it kind of makes it go a little bit weird, but it was handling itself really nice. The overall setup came out to be Really good. The camera in here that I use, Eagle 2 Pro, really good image. I really enjoyed the image. I left everything default. For the HD recording camera, I use the Runcam uh, 3S. So enough talking. Well, let's start taking a look at the footage and see how everything went. All right, so here I'm just getting a feel for it. I'm just flying it nice and easy on angle mode, making sure everything is running before I go any further. And I'm gonna do the auto tune, return to home, just to double check if everything is working great here. I was using the R9 system with the R9MM, I think the, the baby one, I forgot what it's called, the R9MM or the R9M here. And it was obviously working flawlessly. So I'm planning on testing antennas again very soon here. I think I was set to 25 milliwatts, not sure. I need to double check that. Now here we're turning around and um, overall there was slight wind. There wasn't that much wind. Um, so in that perspective, it was a good day to kind of do the auto tune and I'm kind of glad I did. Now, as you can tell around 50, between 50 and 60 kilometers per hour, you can fly pretty good. Once it dips a little bit less than that, it just, it feels like it becomes unstable, but it is still somewhat stable. And actually, I didn't notice this, but I do have the amp reading right there. I don't know how I didn't notice this in my screen. Maybe something was overlaying it, but yeah, okay, so that's really good. I thought I had that disabled. So here we can see it's pulling around 54% throttle. It's pulling around 9.4 amps. So that's really good in that perspective. And again, I was using 3,300 milliamp 4S here, and I was flying it in Horizon. Soon I'm going to start testing loiter mode here. And we're also going to take a look at uh, uh, the auto-tune part. I didn't do the trims. I didn't want to bother with that just yet. I just wanted to get a feel for it. Just make sure I could trust it. And just um, just to see how well it's flying. I don't want any weird surprises to uh, happen here. Um, when you push full throttle, it's not the fastest. That's something that I also noticed. But for me, I don't really care about speed with these. I just want efficiency. Efficiency is key for me here. As you can tell, we've traveled 1.82 kilometers, around 1.8 kilometers so far. So yeah, I really like this. Felt like the sweet spot here between 50 and 60% throttle, which was getting me around uh, anywhere between 49 and 50 kilometers per hour here. 
And right now here, I'm testing return to home. Now, for some reason, I really don't like how INAV turns to the right. I want it to turn to the left. I don't know if there's a way to change that, but I really want to look into that because I don't like it when it turns right. It scares me because when it's turning right, it's going on the area that I cannot reach if anything were to happen. But um, I just, you know, just got used to it. Just let, okay, we'll just let it go on its way and see how everything is working here. And obviously, as you can see, everything is working great. It's returning to home. I'm in that little building down there. So in that perspective, everything is awesome. And for VTX, I'm actually using the AKK VTX with the DVR. However, I didn't want to put in a DVR just yet because I had a feeling that maybe it might crash on the Maiden uh, as soon as I throw it up. So I didn't want to break my expensive SD card. So... That's why I didn't put an SD card on the DVR here. And this is recorded through the Fat Shark. And I really wanted to also finish testing the Iomway V2s with this to see like some sort of a range test. But again, unfortunately, we had, uh, or I only had one propeller and it broke on the landing. So it's pulling around 13 amps, which is uh, pretty good here. What is that? 62% throttle. Here, I'm trying to get some speed. So this is uh, what, 85. And as you can tell, the GPS is taking a while to register the speed. And um, it was kind of, I wasn't really paying attention to it. And I really thought, I was like, well, what? I'm only going 60 like this, but it's probably true and windy. I don't know what's going on there, but it doesn't really matter that much. And now I'm going to start testing loiter mode and everything else. And all of that was working really great. And... I'm just going to leave you guys with the flight footage. You'll see the auto-tune come in soon, and after that, you should see it start to get a little bit better. As you can tell, it's kind of bouncy right now. This is not tuned. This is all default iNav stuff. I've done nothing here. And, um, yeah, in a bit right now, I think this is auto-tune. Yeah, as you can read it on the bottom. Now, this is auto-tune mode right here. And um, just, just keep moving it back and forth. Now, get some altitude when you do this, and make sure you have enough speed. And keep an eye on your speed when you're doing this, because... Uh, depending on your plane, like for example, I had the Zod Dart, no, no, Zod Nano Talon, which I wasn't paying attention to my speed while I was doing this, and I accidentally lost it. It stalled and it just fell out of the sky while I was doing the auto tune. So also keep that in mind when you're doing the auto tune. Make sure you, you watch your speed and so and your altitude. So if anything happens, you can kind of quickly recover. And uh, here, as you can tell, it's getting bouncy, bouncy. And as you keep doing this in the auto tune, you'll you'll notice it'll start bouncing less and less and again this is really good to do if you don't have much wind up there for me i thought it was a good day to just get it get a feel for it and just just to go for the auto tune basically and then i was actually really glad that i did and here i'm just still doing some more stuff and then once you pop out of out of tune now again when you go into auto tune if you are new uh it gets laggy like really laggy and that's normal you're supposed to do that here i popped out just to see how well it's doing now and i don't know if it's a placebo effect but it does feel smoother it felt smoother um and it looked smoother as well for me at least and again this is only one flight and there's still more flights to come with this because i really liked it that was really weird here um as you can tell it was around 50 kilometers per hour and it did this little weird jitter move kind of thing here now i know my cg is spot on and i also know that my battery ink is not going anywhere in there so it could be a gust of wind i don't know what it was but it didn't happen again after that and i wasn't doing anything crazy with the throttle nor the uh the sticks it was just you know it just did that weird little move like that so yeah and here i'm just gonna let you guys enjoy the rest of the flight and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Make sure you check the links down below. I'll have a link to the build video and as well as all the links that I've used in the, in the build here. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.